Hello and welcome to HM Studio. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use the composite map. If you want to make multi-layer textures and if you want to put up your materialing skills, you definitely want to watch this video. Without any further ado, let's jump into 3ds Max and start this lesson. Alright, with the composite map, you can create multi-layer textures. I don't want you to confuse it with multi-layered materials because here we only have maps. You can find the composite map under the general level and you can create one by dragging it into the grid. Here we have the layers and as you can see we have only one layer as default. Each layer has four sections. Here we'll have the texture. We can add a mask here. The opacity of each layer is adjustable from here and we can change the blending mode from here. Okay, if you know how to work with Photoshop, you'd already know about the blending modes. Now let's say we want to create an asphalt material. And I gotta say, this lesson is not about making perfect materials, I'm just trying to teach you how to use the composite map. So let's create a corona material and plug this composite map into the diffuse node. Then we'll need a texture as our base layer. So let's create a corona bitmap and load an asphalt texture. By the way, I'm going to put a link into the description for you to be able to download all of the textures that I'm using in this video. Alright, let's apply it to the surface and then we'll need to add a UBW map on this geometry and use the real world map scale. This option makes you to be able to adjust the size of each texture inside its properties. This method is really coming in handy when you have lots of different textures in one material and they are going to have different sizes. Okay, let's start the interactive rendering to see what we got. First thing we gotta do is to decrease the intensity. And to do that, you need to open up the render settings and decrease it from here under the camera tab. I'm going to increase the highlight compress and a little bit of contrast also. Now let's say we want to have some initial variation in the diffuse color. I mean making some parts brighter and some parts darker. In order to do that, we need to add another layer from here and use a darker version of the same texture that we have as our second layer. So let's add a color correction node and plug the texture into it. Then make it a bit darker by reducing the gamma value and use it as the second layer. All we can see now is the second layer. This is why we need a layer mask to mask some parts of it out. I'm going to use a noise map for that. Alright, now you can see the color variation, but we need to increase the noise size to make it look more natural. Let me tell you how layer masks work. Let's say we have two layers, and we need some parts of the first layer and some parts of the second one. In order to do that, we need a black and white map or texture to mask out the areas that we don't need. So. Let's use this one as our first layer and this brown one as our second. All we can see now is the second layer because we still don't have a layer mask. I'm going to use a checker map as the layer mask for the second layer and this would be the result. Now, what happened is it masked out the black areas from the second layer. So in these areas, we can see the blue layer. Let me increase the tiling of this checker map and see how it's going to affect the result. As you can see, again, in these black areas, we can see the first layer. Now let's try a gradient map. So, if I use this one, it should mask out the top areas from the second layer since we have these black areas here, right? As I said, we can see the first layer in the black areas. Okay, you can also use bitmaps as your layer mask. Let me show you how. All right, uh, this one should work fine. As you can see, we have these specks of dirt on the bottom and you already know what's going to happen. 
Okay, I hope that you understood the logic behind it, and now we can get back to the lesson. The second layer is too dark. I'm going to increase its gamma for a bit. Okay, much better. As for the next layer, I'm going to add some oil stains and dirt. Uh, so let's add another layer and use a corner bitmap for it. Here's the texture that I'm going to use and as I said, you can find the download link to all the textures that I'm going to use in the description. Once again, we can only see the toppest layer, but this time we don't need to add uh, a layer mask, we need to change the blending mode. You can use any of these options based on the texture that you're using, its colors, and also what you're trying to achieve. But for this one, I'm going to use the multiply and you can see the result is pretty good. As for the next layer, I'm going to add some cracks. So we're going to repeat the process for this layer as well. Okay, this one looks good also. Now let's see the differences that we've made so far. Here's before and here's after. Pretty nice, right? Alright, if you pay attention to the details in the real world, you'll notice that these parts close to the curb are always looking brighter than the rest of the road. To simulate that effect, again, we're using the same base texture that we had, but this time a brighter version of it. To do that, first we need to add another layer, then create a color correction node, plug this bitmap into it, increase its gamma value up to 1.5 and use it as for the fifth layer. Okay, since we want this effect only on the sides of the road next to the curb, we need to use a corona distance map for the layer mask. What this map does is to generate a black and white texture based on the distance that one object has to another. Here we want to have the effect for about 1 meter on the sides away from the curb. So in this case our subject is the curb and we need to add it here simply by selecting the curb and clicking on this plus button over here. Okay, you can see the effect, but it has to be inverted and to do that you just need to swap these two colors. It's fine, and if you want to see the mask that's been created, you can just simply plug it into the diffuse node, and here it is. 
Now let's add some variation to it by adding a dirt texture into the distance scale mode. Let's adjust its size and here is the result. I need to make it a bit brighter to get a better result. It's better. I'm just going to increase the distance and make this layer a bit darker to have a subtler result. We're already done with the diffuse map. We just need to add some displacement, reflection, and bump to the material, and that is all. So let's start by adding these cracks into the displacement node and reduce the displacement amount. All right, let's add some reflection to the material. As I said, this lesson is not about making an asphalt material or a perfect material, I'm just showing you how you can make a layer texture and how to use it. So I'm going to keep these parts as simple as I can. Okay, let's add a color correction node, plug the diffuse map into it, uh, desaturate the map and plug it into the reflection glossiness node. Then we can adjust the glossiness effect by manipulating the gamma value. Let's use the same map for the bump map as well. Okay, I guess everything looks fine. That was all for this lesson and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe also. Take care and see you next time.